It's Coach Schumann here with the Success for Life podcast. We have a very special guest on with us today, uh, Henry Kaminsky uh, from Unique Designs. And it's, it's an unbelievable, I came across it on LinkedIn and uh, I, I can't remember if you reached out to me or how exactly it happened, but then I got drawn into his website and, and was just blown completely away. Um, I want to introduce you guys to him and let him tell him a little, a little bit about yourself. And then we're going to talk about just some of the things that I think he's doing that's dynamic and, and different. And we'll talk a little bit about the business space as well and what we see going on in sales because there's so much stuff going on. There's so much information out there. There's so much bullshit, as I like to say, out there as well, right? So um, it's, it's a couple of Jersey guys uh, connecting here and, and, and uh, really trying to take things to the next level. And obviously, my focus is on small business growth. Uh, um, Henry's going to focus on building your business as big as possible. So I definitely want to introduce him. and I'll let him run and tell you a little bit more about himself. Well, Dave, thanks a lot for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. And, and LinkedIn is a is a very powerful platform. I've I've met some some rock stars via LinkedIn. Uh, folks have been on my podcast, the Brand Doctor podcast, and uh, I've been on theirs. Like we're doing today, and it's just LinkedIn is just a great platform to connect with like minded entrepreneurs and business owners that are all trying to you know do the same thing. So. You know, I appreciate uh, being on the show. And uh, so real quick, a little bit behind, uh, you know, uh, backstory on me. Uh, I started out as a graphic designer 10 and a half years ago. And I was just that one man band freelancer, just cranking away. Um, and one day I woke up after 20 hours. Well, it, was, it was about the first year of business, right? 20 hour days working on a laptop. I didn't even have a mouse. I was using the, the, the little platform on the, on the, on the laptop as my mouse, right. Designing, you know, for local cover bands and, um, all types of, of small projects. Right. And, uh, I woke up a year later and there was, two, there was a quarter of a million dollars in the bank. And it was amazing how, if you just, you know, follow your passion and, and really just, dive into something and go super, super deep with it, you, you, begin, you become a master of it. And so when I, did, when I started that and I really focused in on graphic design, it, I really started to build up the business. Now, there's a whole backstory to that too. I worked at Hackensack Medical Center uh, in Hackensack you know, in my corporate career. And it was kind of funny how I bumped into graphic design. So you know, when I first started at the hospital, I was cleaning coffee pots, checking insurance cards, making sure people had insurance before they went into surgery, right? That's how, that's, that was what four years of college education got me right out of college. And uh, so I did that for a couple of years. And then I, 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 I was a hustler from the beginning, man. I, I never stopped my father. I saw my father work four jobs and, you know, he had me mowing lawns at 12. And so I always had this strong work ethic. So as I was building up my, 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 my name in the hospital, I finally landed a career at the Sudden Infant Death Syndrome Center in the Children's Hospital. And uh, my responsibility was to create uh, fundraising events uh, and then take that money that I raised and help families that lost the baby to sudden infant death syndrome in the state of New Jersey. So I was responsible for, you know, creating events like we would do events at the boardwalk in Point Pleasant. We would go to Dorney Park and, you know, all different types of events. So it was a very rewarding job, but it was very sad at the same time. But I actually had Z100 sponsor one of my events one year and it was just literally cold turkey. I emailed Danielle Monero from the morning show and she responded back and she's like, I'd love to help you. And so I needed like really good marketing materials for this particular event. So my buddy was a graphic designer and he offered to do all the design work for me. So I sat next to him and I watched him design all the flyers and the posters and everything. And I was blown away. I was like, I didn't even know what graphic design was. So I was like, I need to know and learn this stuff. So I got my boss to uh, buy the Photoshop file, uh, the program for me. And I started doing all the invitations and promos in house. And that's how I started to really get my feet wet with graphic design. And then fast forward about two years later, the hospital started downsizing a little bit and they had a crazy, crazy, uh, thing going on, and it was the it was it was about 2008, so the economy was going to hell in a handbasket. So things were tightening up for for the hospital, and they said to me, you know, the beginning of 2009, if um, if you uh, 
uh, want to stay here, you're going to become someone's secretary. Um, and that's pretty much the game plan for you. Um, and they sort of walked me through that a little bit. Like they would split up half. They first, they cut me to part time and then they, um, they, um, gave me that news. And so I saw it coming. Uh, but then I said, you know what, this is my calling. I need to do this. I feel it inside. I'm still scared as hell, but I'm going to try it anyway and do it. And what's the worst thing that can happen? I go find another job. So that was it. And then that first year, I just nose to the grind wheel, hustled 20 hour days. I was the accountant. I was the designer. I was the salesperson. I was the delivery man. I was everything inside of my business. And, um, you know, here I am 10 and a half years later now, got a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. And he's any business owner and, you know, in business this long, will tell you, you know, it's not this easy peasy road. Um, and so, you know, hit my million dollar mark around year three. And once design became a commodity, once these websites started coming out and you were getting designs for like $5 and stuff, uh, it really put a huge crush on my business. I wasn't, I was, the competition was getting, I couldn't compete with $5 jobs, you know? I mean, who, who can? So I, I started to, to, I said, if I can't beat them, I'll join them. So I started working as a Fiverr designer. I don't know if anybody knows what Fiverr is. Of course. Yeah. yeah but, um, I started working as a Fiverr designer. I didn't know what to do. And I was working my ass off. And, you know, at the end of the week, I'd see like $90 be deposited into my bank account, you know, and I was like, this isn't going to be sustainable. And then there was this one woman who ordered business cards and she wanted me to design them. And she was treating me like dirt, like less than dirt. And six hours later, she finally approved the design. Now do the math you know, $5 for right. a job. I work six hours. So I was getting paid about 30 cents an hour. And I said to myself, I can't do this anymore. And so I started to look for different, I almost quit. I almost quit because I said, maybe this just isn't for me. Uh, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be my career path going forward. I don't know. And then to top it all off, Hurricane Sandy came through and, and started wiping out two of my big clients. I worked for big liquor distributors and they would, both of them accounted for about <sighs> half a million dollars worth of business as far as sales go. Right. And so when they, when Sandy came through and wiped them out, I was devastated. I mean, because they came back and they said, sorry, Henry, we're going to bring everything in house. We can't. So just, it was just one bad news after the next. And so I didn't change my lifestyle. And for a kid growing up who didn't have much money when it came into that kind of money at such a young age and so quickly, yeah, I became a big douchebag. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You know, I was a, I, nobody could tell me anything. I always wanted to be the big fish in the small pond and always had to have the nicest car and the watches and the cars and all that stuff. And eventually it blew up in my face. My, my family sort of turned their back on me because they were like, who the hell do you think you are? You know, we know who you are. So stop trying to be who you're not. And, you know, to this day, you know, some of them still don't talk to me, but um, you know, thank God for my wife because she was there before, you know, we were just dating at the time and, uh, it was before unique designs really even got its feet on the ground. And, um, so she, you know, I, she still pulls out the business card I gave her when I first met her. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a graphic guy on my own business. You know, I was that, that guy, right? I was, I was 23 years old. I thought it was the best thing. You know, I thought I was this, I thought I was like Trump, you know? So anyway, um, a lot of ups and downs. And I finally got back on my feet because I realized that I needed to reposition my value. I needed to deliver value at a higher level. So I wasn't commoditized anymore. And so I dove deep, deep, deep into branding and strategy and digital marketing and marketing and sales funnel design and all of that. And, and I bumped into click funnels. And, all right. So let me stop you. I want to stop you right there because yeah. I want to, I want to hit on this. Okay. And this is something that I'm, I'm truly intrigued about. And I think our listeners um, will absolutely love what you're going to talk about here. Um, myself, I've been trying to transition my own self over to click funnels. Uh, you know, I have a click funnels account. I've, I can't think of the guy who, who uh, Russell, Russell, uh, Brunson. 
Dave Brunson. Yep. Um, you know, I've watched all his videos, everything, everything, you know. So, um, and that's just how I am as an entrepreneur. Like, I, I want to kind of roll my sleeves up, make sure I understand everything, start that process, and then, and then, and then get rolling. Uh, so much success that I've seen, at least recently in the last couple of years, uh, have come through groups that are now in ClickFunnels. And people were re- originally like, I had lead pages a couple of years ago that I had, um, I had hired a guy that helped me with my, so I have a big social media following it. And um, I had hi- kind of got overwhelming at one point because there were so many messages coming through, so many leads coming through. And so I had hired a guy to really help me with that. And we used lead pages, which was good. But then there was all kinds of issues with it. And I, I still needed X for this and X for that. And, yep. So recently in the last couple of months, I, I came across ClickFunnels and just started consuming content on ClickFunnels, you know, and that's kind of just how I am. Um, and, and when I, I built my company, the first thing I did was I wrote a, a, a book and before this is back in 2002, before I, I was originally training athletes. Um, now I'm completely in the football space from a business standpoint, but originally I was training athletes and, and I wrote a book. That was the first thing I did was actually wrote a book. So I had my own model. I spent 22 out of 24 hours a day, just writing it. I can't even remember what was going on in my relationships half the time there because the person I was in a relationship with, I would forget half the things I, that whole, that whole time period is almost like a, a slate of me just remembering writing. That was it. So uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so I started my business that way and then kicked off and started building and got into different things from there and, and it grew. And, um, but what was really interesting is when I started going to the click funnels, it really began to intrigue me because my business, which I, which we talked about before we went on live is we were in 5,000 fastest growing company, 2011 to 12. Um, probably could have been in 2013. I, just, I don't think I filled out the form that year because I didn't see the huge benefit from it after, from a business standpoint. It wasn't like that big of an impact for me. Um, but then we plateaued and then we actually started to collapse and now we're in the process of rebuilding. A lot of what you, you know, kind of talked about when you talked about the $5 fiber stuff, we deal with in our side, we run camps and stuff. We went from uh, our model, we don't charge a lot, but there's all these free, like sort of big shoe companies, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, mm-hmm. run free programs now. So we had to figure out how to adjust our model mm-hmm. because it went from one year, you know, we were doing 2 million in sales to, you know, almost half in a, in a year. And mm-hmm. so employees, like we went from having 15 employees in house to almost none. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, we had to use contractors and, and decentralize a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So coming across click funnels is really interesting. And that's when I came across as I was going through click funnels and, and, and you, you talked to me on LinkedIn and, and, and you talking about how you utilize click funnels and design. I'd love for you to talk about like how you discovered it and what you're, you know, how you're utilizing click funnels in association, what you're doing from, from your business and, and what kind of impact that you think it has for, for customers and, and, and sales. Yeah. Well, it, it's a, da- it, so first and foremost, I love Russell Brunson. He's a client of mine. I was a client of his for a couple of years and, and, and I helped him sort of rebrand the click funnels when click funnels first came out, you know, he was, his identity, his visuals were all over the place and we were able to sort of wrangle all that in and, and really create some really great impactful, you know, visual identity and branding. Um, and then, you know, And as a flip, you know, he was helping me sort of get back on my feet and really walk me through the digital marketing uh, uh, space and really help me understand funnel design and well, yeah, funnel design and and architecture, right? So I knew that there was a need in the ClickFunnels community because people were using it, but they weren't designers. They weren't um, savvy in this side of it. You know, they could, they could put the templates together, right? But they all, they all started to look the same. You know, everybody would just, you know, change a color here and there, right? But it, the fonts and everything were all the same. So I came in and people started to see my design work in the, fu- in, in the funnel world. And they were like, I didn't even know click funnels could do that. <laughs> and that's what transformed my business. I found a niche that, that was hurting and needing of something badly. And I filled the void you know, I, I, I came in and, but then there was a lot, 
you know, there was a, there's a lot to do with that. So I want to first and foremost tell your audience that ClickFunnels is a phenomenal tool. And let's not forget, it's a tool. It's just like a hammer when you go build a house. But if you don't have the blueprint, before you go build the house, that hammer is going to do you no good. And so I want your audience to really understand that ClickFunnels is a great tool to use to grow your business, generate leads, generate sales online. It's great. But if you do not have the foundational strategy, the brand strategy, the business strategy to use ClickFunnels, you are going to waste a tremendous amount of time, money, energy, and you will be out of business before you even launch. Why? Because you didn't do your homework. And I don't know how you want to preface this. <laughs> I don't know what, what theme you want to mark this podcast, but I'm all about the basics. And, and when it comes to branding, and branding is the experience you give your audience or the people that you want to serve or sell to or your target audience. It's the gut feeling people get when they interact with you in your business. It's that promise that you deliver you know, to your audience. That's what brand is. You know, people don't buy products or service. They buy brand. You're not wearing that sweatshirt today because, you know, it's a phenomenal sweatshirt. You bought the sweatshirt because of the brand that's tailored to the front of it, right? That's why you bought the sweatshirt. So that's what people are missing when they're using this particular tool. And so when I have folks coming to me from the ClickFunnels community now, you know, I'm very selective on who it is that I move forward with to help them. Because what happens is if they don't, if they're out there just trying to sell, you know, Donald Trump toilet paper through a sales funnel, one, that's not going to really help. That's not going to fulfill me as a brand right. strategist, right? right? But if you have a, a, a great business that you want to impact the world and have, truly help people and you want to create a business that is going to be long term, you know, then I'm more in, in, inclined to, and, and you're willing to do the homework, you're willing to build the bottom, build from the bottom up then I'm more inclined to work with you because I just seen a lot of get rich quick people in this community and it's bothering me. And I unfortunately had to remove myself from it because I just couldn't deal with it anymore. It's toxic behavior. And I don't know where that's all coming from, but it needs to stop because these you're, you're actually, wherever this information's coming from, it, it is doing these folks a disservice because if you don't know how to properly build a business, you shouldn't be building a business. And I'm sorry, ClickFunnels is a phenomenal tool, but it's not a business. You cannot build a business off of it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Build a brand and use ClickFunnels to build it. So it's all about the tools and understanding that. And, and when you do that, you're going to be much more successful in the long run. Right. How do you, how do you help people? So someone comes to you and says, Hey, uh, you know, I have this business. I've had some things that have been successful and now, uh, you know, they may have come to you cause they, they saw what you did or you saw your background. How do I get the strategy from a branding standpoint? Mm -hmm. So I can go ahead and then utilize tools like sure. ClickFunnel or, uh, or I guess slash, um, build my business in a step-by-step -step process that makes my brand look like something special. Or in a lot of cases, like when I first started my company, you know, just like you were, I was a one man show driving around in my car, working with athletes. And like, you know, I built, I built the reputation from one person to another. But if you went online, you would think that I had a thousand clients and because <laughs> I, I broke, you know, I, I videotaped stuff I did with them. I broke mm -hmm. down what I was doing with them. So I wasn't saying that I had a thousand clients, but you could see exactly what I was doing. This is a long time ago. Yeah, uh, It was a rudimentary site, but the thing that I always, I long for that site in, in a sense because it was, it really just articulated exactly what I was trying to do. It had mm -hmm. the book that I wrote, which had all the information in it and at the time it was a PDF. We actually would send it to them or, mm -hmm. or they could download it. And then it had the videos of what I was doing and why and that was basically it. And then they could click and click and, and either book a, book a training session um, or, or buy one of the things. And that was really it on the site. Um, 
and it was back when a time, you know, 2002, 2003, where it wasn't um, – uh, a big deal. And my background, believe it or not, I was, when I first got out of my, went to college, I, I, I played football in college, got my MBA. Um, I went right away in the technology industry and I, I was lucky enough in a year into to working that I got a job in New York City with a, a fast growing boutique web development firm. Mm. And basically, um, you know, I had done some stuff in college. I had launched my own company. I had a term paper writing company, okay, which I put a, I slapped a one page website up and, and built a membership thing, real rudimentary, um, and uh, built a little business on that. So all of a sudden I got this job, was working with the biggest of the big clients. And I quickly realized, that was when I realized that I should be, really should go back to being an entrepreneur because I thought they knew everything, right? I was like, I've got to learn, I've got to grind it out. Like, like, you know, these people know more than me. And I would go into these meetings with guys and I was making good money, but I, I would go into these meetings with these guys and they didn't have the foggiest idea. And they were making four or $500,000 a year. Didn't have the foggiest idea how they wanted to, uh, in, in the case of banks, get online customers back then in that 99 time frame. They didn't know how to do that. And I was helping people do it. And I realized, wow, you know, like, let me figure out something that I'm truly interested in and leverage business and that. And for me, it was sports and football. And, and I did that. Um, so, so how does somebody go? And, and I guess that's my long winded way of going and saying, how does somebody go and take that in today's day and age where there's so much information, so much crap on Fiverr, like you could spend all day on Fiverr, right? Going through, trying people out, spend $50 here, $20 here, $100 here, and, and not find anything or find one guy that might do an okay job. And you're like, that's okay and not quite what I want. H how do you help people from a strategic standpoint develop that brand mm -hmm. and then transition their business into something that's real? So it's, it's, that's a great question. It's a great question. You know, I usually start by asking my, my, my the folks that engage me if they like to gamble or not. And they, they'll say, no, I don't like to gamble. I say, okay, me either, because that's why I pay a premium and I pay for a certain amount of assurance when I, when I engage and I purchase certain vendors to help me with my business growth. If you want a, you know, $5 brand, then go spend $5. Here's that old saying too, you know, if you, uh, if you want monkeys, keep paying peanuts, you know? And so what I do is I really help my clients understand the basics and I really help them do a couple of things. One is I help them uncover who exactly they are serving and who they want to serve. And then we want to differentiate them from the other folks. We want them to stand out. We want them to understand why people are investing in them. What are their values? What are their core beliefs? We want to help them go super narrow instead of broad and, and wide because the, myth that the quicker you get to really understanding and committing to doing one thing amazingly and extraordinarily well, you will be defined as a specialist. And we all know specialists get paid more than generalists. And so that's what I did with myself. I said, I don't want to be a graphic designer anymore because they're a dime a dozen. I want to be a strategist. The, the most value you could ever be paid for is your thinking. And so I said, I'm going to position myself as a, a, a designer who has a, a tremendous savvy in brand strategy, brand development, business growth. Um, you should get anybody to design your website these days that you just mentioned. But how do you get somebody to help you grow your business and build a brand, connect with your audience? And then what we want to do is we want to connect the strategy to all of what I help them develop. So how do we position them? How do we help them find their voice? When you put the right message in front of the right person, that's when the home runs get hit. So nine times out of 10, I could show you discovery sessions, intake forms um, from clients that write in it before they get on the phone with me that I am filling out this form for the sole reason is I don't know what my voice is. I want to know the words that help connect me to my audience. And that's exactly what I do. And so what I've done is I've created this 
freelance design business into a boutique branding agency. So now we have 16 employees and we have departments and we have, so I need to stay where I'm best. I'm a killer designer, but I love people and I love building the strategies out now. So I'm there with my clients and now I have my team. I have a ClickFunnels team. I have a development team. I have a design team and I pay top dollar for these guys because I'm a premium service. And, and so I want to look for those folks, the folks that value quality, they value premium. They want to be better. They want to continue to grow and improve. Like that's my ideal person, right? So when we start to, my biggest philosophy is this. If you uh, prescribe before you diagnose, you're, consi- you're, you're considering, uh, you, you're, you're considered as uh, delivering malpractice. And that's what happens when everybody tries to jump into click funnels or jump into building a design or a business or some sort of marketing campaign without doing the proper diagnosis. So I will diagnose before I prescribe. So the way I like to work is diagnose, prescribe, apply, and then reapply as necessary. And that's why they call me the brand doctor. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where the that's where the planes come in and the, and the nice cars. That's right. I, I love well, the videos. Yeah, so that's that's how I help my clients actually develop something of substance. Because we all went on that date, whether we're male or female, we all went on that date with that hot girl or guy, and we were dying to get them to go on a date with us. We finally get them on the date. We sit down, and it was it was like talking to a rock. Yes. No personality, no substance. And you sat there and was like, when is this date ever going to (laughs) end? Right? That's how people are building their businesses these days. And so I want to develop businesses and brands and help entrepreneurs develop these businesses and brands that have substance, that have uh, a personality to them that their audience is going to be like, I have to work with them. Right? So that's, that's what I do now. And the, di- and the cool thing is, is this, everyone says, well, what makes you so different? You know, so when you're, when you're talking about branding, there's three questions you got to ask yourself, who you are, what your product and service really is, what, what business are you really in and what differentiates you? What is your differentiating point in the marketplace? And for me, there's brand strategists out there that'll, chatter you up for hours at a time and give you all the strategy in the world. And then they'll say, go figure it out. In my firm, we do all of that. And then we say, Hey, listen, we have a team over here of 16 folks. We already built out your entire strategy. You want to come over here into this department? We'll help you build the whole thing out for you and with you. So you don't have to go out and start, you know, interviewing firms and doing all of that legwork all over again. So, it's very hard to find the two combined. And that's where I differentiate myself from the marketplace, inside my marketplace. And so people feel relieved that after they do all the strategy with me, now they can actually say, okay, Henry, you know everything about me inside and out. Why don't you just help? Why don't you just build it for me? And so that's, that's how I developed my business. And in 2017, I really started to go heavy into it last year. Um, And uh, that's how I serve the market. And I've wound up work because I'm not cheap by any means. I work with less people, but I make more money because now I can really, really focus on 10 clients a year, right? Versus 50 and not be able to serve them at the level that I want to serve them at. Let's talk about one thing I think is really interesting because you do a great job of it within your business and obviously you're strategizing and helping other businesses do that. And that is converting your prospects into clients. And a lot of businesses, now the business I was in, it was a low, lower ticket, although we're actually, it's fun, ironic that we're talking about this, but we're actually moving into more higher ticket products because we realize well, I mean, what's the point in being the highest ticket person in the $99 business when someone's going for free? Go and find a way that you can add more value to your customers. And now you're not competing where someone says, hey, I can just go over here and get for free. What's the difference, right? So, so we, we've moved into that area. 
Um, but I found, you know, and, I, and I, I've been, I would say, I'm, I, I won't say that I'm a completely natural salesperson, but I have a good idea of how to do it. And I know for many years of, of selling how to go through my process, but that's probably people's biggest problem. So you go and develop the strategy, you, you develop the branding for them, you put it all together, you yourself do a great job of selling what you do. How do you help the customer understand how important the sales process, that ability to go from the branding and the beautification of what they're doing to the selling and closing? Right. Right. That's a great, great question. Great questions, Dave, by the way. You know, right. people will determine the value of your business by, the, by, the, by how well the questions are designed. And so what I do is I help my clients understand when you form and design great questions, people will perceive you at a much higher level than if you're asking silly questions, you know, the, 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 the mundane questions the questions that people already know the answers to. So what I want to do is I want to help my clients understand their target audience better than those people know themselves. Because when you know that, when you can get, get under their skin, if you will, and really start to talk about the emotions that they wake up to every day and actually keep them up at night, you know, as a salesperson, you've, you've heard that terminology before. You got to understand what keeps them up at night. Well, it's time, it's money, it's growth, it's business, it's leads, it's sustaining business, right? It's budgeting business. These are all things that we as entrepreneurs all worry about. You know what I mean? Right. So designing the visual aspect of your, of your business is one thing. It's, it's, it's like the clothes you wear. Would you walk into the Grammy Awards, you know, or the Oscar Awards with, with, with bummy clothes on? Absolutely not. So are you gonna are you gonna present your business in that fashion to the marketplace if you don't you know like that's what I always I ask people that and well of course not well then why would you spend five dollars on a design right is that how you want your business to be represented because unfortunately we're gonna we're going to judge we're just wired like that and if I see a website that looks half ass from the from the early two thousands. I'm going to immediately click off of it because I'm going to say these people are outdated. I want cutting edge. I want, I want, I want next level. So that's how the visual identity is going to affect your bottom line because you're going to be judged immediately whether or not you're credible or authoritative in your niche. So we got to get that dressed up first. The second thing is we want to have that substance. We want to, we want to be that, uh, that hot guy or that hot girl with a great personality. Those people are f phenomenal to be around and, and we all flock to those types of people. That's your business is the same thing. It's a living organism. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a person. It's a, it's a living organism and what you feed it is going to determine how strong it will become. Are you going to put your kids in a cheap stroller are you going to put your family on a cheap bus route or a, or a bus that's ready to fall apart to get them to where they need to? Be? No, you're going to want to put them in the best thing, the best case scenario you can to help that provide for them. Well, it's the same thing for your business. Your business is no different. You got to treat it like, like how you would treat a, 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 a child. You know, your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, your, your significant other. When you start doing that, you'll start to see things a lot differently with, with inside of your business. Now, how to help them convert? Again, it's understanding who they're serving. And when you can put the blindfolders on and understand that you're not going to be able to please everyone everywhere and you focus in on one person, you're going to win because it's a lot easier to speak to one person than it is a thousand people. So that's how you better, that's how you create a better conversion or a better, a, a more refined and distilled message to your audience as you focus on a specific user profile. And that's what we do inside of the diagnosis phase of the program of the brand accelerator program is we go into and we create these user profiles for the client with the client. So now we, we, we can pull out little nuances here and there that 
will help them put the right message in front of those folks. I'll give you a quick example. So I was working with a doctor, a physician in Australia, great guy. And we went through this phase and he was, uh, he had a company that helped the physicians pass their medical exam, you know, to get to, to actually get their medical, uh, their practitioner license. Right. And he was positioning himself as like a, you know, a, a, a prep course. When this guy was, has been a physician for 10 years and this guy was a wealth of knowledge. And as we went through the diagnosis phase, we realized that the folks that were buying from him currently, they were buying the prep course because of him, not because of the prep course. So I said, Tom, you have to position yourself as a subject matter expert here because they all want you. And when people want you, you've become the specialist now. Now you can charge top dollar for that. So we developed, you know, uh, uh, three different tiers of business for him. You know, an entry level, a medium uh, level, and a, and a back-end core offer that was really going to make him all his money. And we developed that for him. And then he rolled it out and he said, wow, I would have never, ever went this deep on my own. And that's why I hired you. And I said, there we go. That's this, that's, I want people to start to think on a way deeper level. And I want them to start asking their audience questions and start asking themselves questions that they wouldn't ever think of. When you start to do that for your audience, now you become attractive. Now you start to create intrigue. And because they just want to be led. They just want to be led that's why they're hiring you. So lead them and don't tell them things that they already know, challenge them. And so that's, that's how we create better conversion for our clients. Uh, absolutely. I, I, I think it's really interesting and, and, and I want to touch on, and I know we're probably coming up against it here, so I don't want to hold you up today, but um, there's a few people that, and, and you've probably listed them all yourself as well, that have become celebrities in the business, I don't even know if it's podcasting space or YouTube, and you probably know where I'm starting to start to go with it. And I've watched some of their, their stuff and actually seen some speak live, some of them before they actually became uh, famous. And I believe that some of the stuff that they're pitching, there are guys that I think are selling things spot on. And I believe some other guys were selling things that were spot on and now have gone into a situation where they're, they're shoveling like garbage out there because that's what people want to watch. And, and I think it is beginning to the entrepreneur growth that has happened um, is really good. And I think they may have had some level of responsibility in making that on a mat more mass scale. But then it gets to a point where there's all kinds of people that are just throwing things out there that make no sense. Guys are entrepreneurs. They, they like – in my space, for example, in football, they, they now train one client. The next thing I know, they're an entrepreneur. You know? it's, it's like, there's a difference between training one client or working with one client and having a business. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they're peddling everything they possibly can. So uh, I'll, I'll throw some names out there and I'll let you tell you what you think. And you can choose not to answer if, if, if it's for some reason you've worked with one of them and you, and, and, you know, you can. <laughs> so my first one is, and I was a huge fan of his in the beginning. Um, it's Gary Vaynerchuk, a huge mm -hmm. fan in the beginning. And uh, as my business had really grown, I happened to just come across his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it really interesting. And, I have my thoughts on it, um, but now I find it not in the same capacity that it once was. Yep. What, 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 what's your thoughts on, on some of the stuff? I, I had the same experience with Gary. I had the same experience with Gary. I had the opportunity to meet him a few times personally. Uh, as a person, I think he's a phenomenal guy. As an entrepreneur, right. he's a phenomenal guy. Right. I, that, that doesn't mean I have to agree with everything that he says. Right. And so one of the things that I do love is his work ethic, obviously, and his authenticity Absolutely. and all of that. Like that. You can't buy that stuff, right? But one right. thing I do not like is uh, this whole give away your best stuff for free bullshit because right. that's not what business people do. 
We, that's, that's, that's poor business practice, in my opinion. Yes, you want to provide value. You want to help solve problems. Now, here's the thing. I don't solve problems until I'm engaged by the client. I have those two, I have toolkits on my website that you could download and you could review the PDFs. And listen, I could sell those for a hundred bucks a piece. That's how valuable they are. I can promise you that. I could probably sell them for more than that. But that's my contribution to the marketplace because it's, it's great information, but that's not going to bring in a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 client, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, it's going to get, it's going to scratch the surface. It's going to help them get a little insight. But that is just, that's my contribution. That's my freebie, I guess, if you will, right? But if you want to engage me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I'm not giving that away for free. That's how I put food on the table for my family. Right. That's what I got a master's degree for. That's what I've spent 10 and a half years mastering my craft about. I'm not giving it away that for, for free. What are you, crazy? Ask any successful business person. They're not going to say, give away your best stuff. You're in business to make a profit. Absolutely. Otherwise, and, you're a charity. A hundred percent. And, you know, I, I, I think that uh, in the beginning, I thought that, that stuff was, you know, and I do all kinds of free things. Um, but I think you have to transition to people to give them value. And if, they, if, if your stuff loses value because everything is for free, then why should someone turn around and, and pay for you? And, and, and engaging in that, what you talked about, one-on-one -on -one basis um, and understanding the client. I mean, that's, you know, that's what it's predicated on. I'm going to transition to one other, one person who I think is who I found to be really exceptional in exactly what you're talking about. I don't know if you know who he is, Grant Cardone. Of course. Yeah. So Grant Cardone, you know, talks about almost the same, the, the opposite thing from that standpoint is that, um, you know, you've got to be able to articulate your value and sell that value and get people to pay for that value. And that's what you should be doing. What do you think about some of the stuff that he talks about? So I, I again, fan of, fan of Grant. Um, but I, 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 I'm not on the same wavelength as him either. He's the pushy salesman. Right. I'm not right. I want to be, I want to position myself as the trusted advisor, the fiduciary. I don't want to sell you into something that you're not comfortable in getting yourself into. And I won't pull those. I won't use those tactics. Instead, I'd rather be on the same side of the desk of the person that's engaging me rather than on the opposite side talking at them. I want to talk with them. I don't want to talk at them. And so uh, I love Grant's uh, story. I love his hustle. Again, all of that stuff is inspiring, but I'm not a by any means a hardcore closer or any of that type of that, that type of personality. So, um, you know, I read his books. I, I love the 10 X book. I think it's a great book. Right. Um, but you got to know how to use it uh, with your finesse, like with your personality, with your, like if you try to be a Grant, Grant Cardone, which everybody, you know, tries to do after you read a book, <laughs> right? After, you know, you read right. Gary's book, now you're Gary Vanchuk, right? <laughs> right. right. Now, you know, now you're crushing it. Like, <laughs> Like, no, like you, these people, some say it, some don't, but what you want to say, what they're trying to say, I believe is take what I'm telling you and make it your own. Right. But use the, use the, the core, use the, the concept, use the, 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 the core message that I'm trying to, but make it your own. So um, again, that's my take on Grant. No, nothing against the guy. Guys is tremendously successful. I mean, uh -huh. how can I, you know, how can I, I'm not going to bash them, either of them, but I could agree and disagree on certain things. So how, how did you find, and this is, this is where I transition on it, um, how did you find your voice as to what kind of sings in your heart about how you approach business? Um, because you got two, two guys who are both wildly successful, almost in kind of different philosophies of doing it. Right. And, and you're almost kind of in between there and how you do things. How, how did you find your voice and, and how do you help people to understand what they need to do to find what can make them successful? Yeah, this is great. And then I got to watch cause I got a one o'clock. We're kind yeah, of going absolutely. Little bit. Yeah. I have the client call me and I'm like, Oh, I gotta call him. Um, so uh, real quick, here's what happens. What, I found my voice and, and the way I found my voice is I worked with a lot of folks that I didn't, want to work with. I found that they weren't good fits and I realized that why they weren't good fits 
And it wasn't them per se, it was me. And so I took, I took 1000% responsibility for that. And I said, I'm just not going to be able to work with a client like that. If you want to create, become the art director, if you want to be the copywriter, if you want to take 1000% control over the project, then you don't need to hire me. You need to hire an order taker. I'm an expert. I'm a specialist. You're not going to walk into the doctor's office and tell them how to perform surgery on your knee after you blew it out on the 20 yard line. You're going to that orthopedic surgeon because you know that he's going to take care of that knee. And so I realized that those folks are the ones that I want to work with. And those folks get the best results from my program is because they let me do what I do best is I have a very specific process and I walk them through it and I lead them. And so that's how I found my voice. And I said, I'm sticking to this because I believe in my process, I believe in my people, and I believe in my service, my product, the three Ps, right? And so that's, that's how I found my voice. I just found out what I didn't want in my life and said, no more, because life is too short. And as we get older, I don't know how old you are, but you know, as we get older, we start to value our time a hell of a lot more Absolutely. than when we were young. And so now I want to focus on being around people that I love to be around, including my family, including my clients. Tell people, because I'm on with the brand doctor, so I, I want to let everybody know where they can find you, uh, especially the podcasters who will be listening. Obviously, on video, that we'll put stuff in there, yeah. but um, let them know where they can find you. I'll make it really easy. All you have to do is go to my website, Unique Designs with a Z at the end, not an S, dot net. So, Unique Designs with a Z dot net. You'll find my YouTube channel there. You'll find my podcast. You'll find my Instagram account. Facebook, everything. Everything is all in that website. And uh, take a look around. We have the blog, the podcast, the, you know, all the social media channels are all connected to it. So there's a tremendous amount of value on the site. You could spend hours on it, but believe it or not, um, just, just, just downloading, you know, the information and content. Absolutely. Henry, thank you very much. The brand doctor. Thanks for being on Success for Life podcast. Um, I'll let you get on that client call and then we'll see you real soon. Thanks so much for being on. Thanks a lot, David. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too.